I'm sure a lot of you have seen the training mode mod pack going around on Twitter, but you might not know exactly what it's capable of. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the things you can do with this mod pack. First, let's take a look at the basic features, and then we can look at some of the applications. The mod pack has a few toggles that let you control what you're able to do. To go through them, just use your taunts, and each direction of taunt has its own unique features. Every time you cycle to the next toggle, your character will change colors and words will appear near you, telling you what that feature was. Up taunt has four different varieties. White is vanilla, and that's just a normal Smash 4. There's no changes to the game, it's just the training mode as it's always been. Red gives you the full mod pack. This displays hitboxes and color overlays. Hitboxes are color coded, so each color means a different thing. All the hitboxes between yellow and red are just regular hitboxes, where the redder it is, the more damage it does. Magenta hitboxes means that it's a spike. White hitboxes are wind boxes. Command grabs display in cyan, and regular grabs are green. Unfortunately, some hitboxes don't show up properly, so I honestly wouldn't rely on this mod to use it to look at hitboxes. There are other tools out there that do it much better anyways, such as Smash Forge, where you can just look at hitboxes frame by frame. In the training mode, it's very hard to see hitboxes that don't stay out for very long anyways, so I don't really recommend it. In addition to the hitbox display, you also get some nice color overlays. When you see a character highlighted in these colors, it tells you what state that character is in. The hit stun overlays are as follows. Green means uncancelable hit stun. Hitting an opponent while they are green means that you landed a true combo. Once they turn cyan, that means that they could have air dodged, and magenta means they could cancel the hit stun with an attack. Other overlays include blue, meaning a character is intangible, green displaying end lag of a move, so basically that's the time in which you could punish something, purple being heavy armor and super armor, and red being counters. Going back to the other toggles that you have through up taunt, you get the green one, which is in my opinion the most useful. In this mode, you can force a CPU to DI in a certain way by using the side taunt, you get the same color overlays as before except without the hitboxes, and you can force the CPU into other actions with down taunt. Let's look at the DI control first. Using the side taunt, you can control your opponent's DI. Every direction that an arrow is pointing is the direction that you're forcing the CPU to DI in, and when it's pointing in every direction, that means the CPU is going to DI in a direction completely at random. Another useful option that you have is that you can make them DI randomly between left and right as well. In addition to the DI controls, you also get access to new toggles through your down taunt. Again, white here means no changes. Red and green force the CPU to either mash air dodge or mash jump out of hit stun. This can be very useful for testing percent ranges on combos and seeing what percents an opponent can escape that combo at with each option. The blue toggle is for random ledge options. Every time the CPU grabs the ledge when this toggle is enabled, they will wait on the ledge for a random period of time, then perform one of the four basic ledge get up options. Jump, attack, roll, or neutral get up. In addition, they will hold shield after doing a neutral get up, so that you can practice hitting them during their few frames of vulnerability. The orange toggle lets you control the opponent's percents. This is mostly used outside of training mode in a normal match to still be able to control the computer's percents. A recently added feature is that if you use up taunt while the orange toggle is up, it will lock your percent and so that every time you respawn, you will come back with that percent. By using this, you can make it much easier to practice rage dependent combos. In training mode, set the percents to 999, lock your percent, and then set the computer damage to 0 and SD, and you'll come back with full rage. The next toggle is magenta for infinite shields, which removes all shield damage and shield decay over time. And finally, the last toggle is Cyan, which forces the computer to hold shield. This lets you practice shield break setups and shield poking. There is one last toggle on up taunt, which is an input display, but this isn't too useful as a player. However, if you are a video maker and want to make a video about a new technique or a combo, it is pretty convenient to have the input display built into the game. Blue means shield, red is special, green is attack, orange is jump, and purple is grab. To me, I feel like it disappears a bit too fast to be too useful unless you slow the game down a bit. It has already been improved upon though since the first version, so I would expect this input display to get even better in the future. A quick thing to note about the DI is that it's not actually left and right, it's DIing in and out. So with this DI, Mario's gonna DI out even though I change directions. 
And then if you use this arrow, he's going to be DIing in every time. It's not left or right. It's out and in. And then another feature that this thing has is that it gets rid of the spawn platform. So that it makes it a lot quicker if you're practicing kill confirms for the a CPU to just respawn and come back. Okay, so now we know what all the options are. So let's take a look at some cool ways that you can use this to either learn more about the game or to practice difficult inputs. This was just a few things that I thought of, but I'm sure there are many more ways to use this mod pack. Get creative with it, and I'm sure you can come up with more. Leave a comment on this video if you'd like to share any of your favorite uses to the training mod pack, and I may feature some of them in a future video.